The sun cast a warm glow on Jane and John's new house as they pulled up in their moving truck. Excitement and anticipation filled the air as they stepped out, eager to start a new chapter in their lives. The charming suburban neighborhood seemed like the perfect place to build their future together. Once settled, they decided to explore the town and introduce themselves to the neighbors. As they walked down the tree-lined streets, they exchanged warm greetings with friendly faces, already feeling a sense of belonging. In the late afternoon, they noticed something peculiar on the outskirts of town, an old caravan tucked away under the shade of ancient oaks. Smoke gently rose from its chimney, indicating someone lived inside. Jane and John exchanged curious glances, intrigued by the sight of a traveler residing in their midst. As days turned into weeks, the town gradually revealed its unique charm to Jane and John. They frequented the local farmer's market, where they chatted with the friendly vendors, and they enjoyed evening strolls along the tranquil riverbank. The stress of their previous life began to melt away, and they couldn't have been happier with their decision to move. However, amidst the idyllic atmosphere, a sense of unease began to creep into their minds. There were whispers among the townsfolk about missing pets and strange occurrences in the area. Some locals even shared stories of loved ones who had mysteriously vanished without a trace, leaving a cloud of suspicion hanging over the town. One evening, as Jane and John enjoyed a cozy dinner at their new home, they heard a distant scream that sent shivers down their spines. They glanced at each other, sharing a knowing look that something was amiss. The stories they had heard, coupled with the enigmatic traveler in the caravan, stirred their curiosity and concern. As the night wore on, they found it difficult to shake off the feeling of being watched. Jane reassured John that it was just their minds playing tricks on them due to the unfamiliar surroundings. But deep down, they both knew that something was off about their mysterious neighbor, and they couldn't help but wonder what secrets lay hidden within the caravan's rustic walls. The days passed, and the unsettling feeling in Jane and John's new home refused to subside. Strange occurrences became more frequent, and the once inviting town seemed to wear a veil of unease. Jane noticed that some neighbors seemed hesitant to talk about the mysterious traveler living in the caravan, and others simply avoided the topic altogether. One afternoon, as Jane tended to her garden, she struck up a conversation with Mrs. Williams, an elderly woman who had lived in the neighborhood for decades. Jane cautiously broached the subject of the traveler, hoping to learn more about the enigmatic figure who seemed to cast a shadow over the town. Mrs. Williams hesitated, her face revealing a blend of fear and reluctance. She finally spoke in a hushed tone, Oh, dear, you're better off not getting involved with him. He's a nomad, you see, comes and goes as he pleases, and he's been doing so for years. But you must stay away from him, for he doesn't take kindly to intruders. Intrigued and concerned, Jane pressed for further details. She learned that the mysterious traveler, known simply as Pete, was an enigmatic figure whom everyone in town kept their distance from. His strangeness seemed to unnerve the locals, and tales of his solitary existence filled the air with an air of trepidation. Jane confided in John about her concerns, and he shared her unease. Together, they decided to investigate further, hoping to find some answers that would quell the growing dread in their hearts. One evening, after the sun had set, Jane and John discreetly ventured towards the outskirts of town, following a trail that led to Pete's secluded caravan. They kept their distance, hidden behind bushes, as they observed Pete moving about within the dimly lit space. A sense of foreboding hung in the air, and Jane felt her heart pound in her chest. As they watched, Pete carried out his daily routines, giving no hint of the dark secrets that might be concealed within the walls of his mobile home. John whispered, we can't jump to conclusions, Jane. Let's gather more evidence before we make any accusations. Jane nodded, though her curiosity and fear were warring within her. The more they uncovered, the more they felt that Pete might be connected to the mysterious disappearances plaguing the town. Over the next few days, Jane and John discreetly spoke to other townsfolk who had interacted with Pete. Some shared eerie tales of encountering him in the woods at odd hours, while others spoke of strange noises emanating from his caravan during the night. The evidence was far from conclusive, but it was enough to convince Jane and John that something was seriously amiss with their reclusive neighbor. 
they knew they had to tread carefully, for the darkness they were inching towards might reveal a horror beyond their imagination. In the depths of their hearts, Jane and John sensed that the secrets of Pete's caravan held the key to the truth, and their relentless pursuit of the unsettling discoveries would soon propel them down a path they could never turn back from. As they delved deeper into the past, they discovered that Pete had a disturbing history of moving from town to town, leaving behind a trail of vanished individuals and pets. The pressure was mounting, and Jane and John knew they needed solid evidence to bring to the authorities. They decided to confront Pete directly, hoping to coax him into revealing incriminating information. One evening, as the sun began its descent, they cautiously approached Pete's caravan, their hearts pounding with trepidation. John moved forward to knock on the door, but to his surprise, he noticed the door was slightly ajar. A sense of foreboding filled the air, but curiosity got the better of him, and he gently pushed the door open. Jane, however, sensed danger and pulled John's arm, pleading with him to reconsider. Her instincts screamed at her to stay away, but John's curiosity led him into the dim and grimy interior of the caravan. Despite the darkness, John managed to find a lamp and switched it on, revealing a sight that horrified him to the core. The lamp itself was crafted from what appeared to be human skin, and strange and disturbing symbols adorned the walls. A chilling atmosphere enveloped the small space as John's eyes wandered further, only to be met with the unsettling sight of rows of cat and dog heads arranged in a grotesque display. Overwhelmed by terror and revulsion, John and Jane rushed out of the caravan, their hearts pounding in their chests. They knew they had stumbled upon something unimaginably sinister, and they couldn't shake the feeling that danger lurked around every corner. The shocking discovery had shattered their sense of security, leaving them to confront a horrifying reality they never could have anticipated. The gruesome discovery inside Pete's caravan left Jane and John reeling with fear and disbelief. Their minds struggled to comprehend the horrors they had just witnessed. They knew they couldn't remain silent any longer, they had to act and confront the darkness that had taken residence in their new town. The police station was a somber place as they entered, their faces tense with anxiety. They requested a meeting with the sheriff, hoping he would listen to their account of the eerie events surrounding Pete. Sheriff Miller, a grizzled veteran of law enforcement, listened attentively as Jane and John narrated their findings and the unsettling history of Pete's nomadic lifestyle. At first, he remained skeptical, but the evidence they provided slowly chipped away at his doubt. All right, I'll admit this is strange, but we can't jump to conclusions without concrete proof, Sheriff Miller said cautiously. But Sheriff, John insisted, we found that lamp made of human skin, and those symbols. Sheriff Miller interrupted him, I understand your concerns, but we need to investigate further before taking any action. I'll assign a few deputies to look into this matter discreetly. Though not entirely satisfied, Jane and John understood that the wheels of justice often turn slowly. They reluctantly accepted the sheriff's response, knowing they had done all they could for now. Over the following days, the town was abuzz with whispers about the eerie discoveries inside Pete's caravan. More people came forward with their own unsettling encounters with him, strengthening the case against him. The collective fear and vigilance of the town's residents began to weigh heavily on Pete, who grew increasingly aware that he was under scrutiny. One evening, as the moon shone high, Jane and John witnessed something that sent chills down their spines. They saw Pete skulking around the outskirts of town, his demeanor furtive and suspicious. Their hearts raced as they followed him from a safe distance, fearing they were on the cusp of unraveling a horrifying truth. The night led them to an abandoned cabin deep in the woods. Peering through the windows, they saw Pete surrounded by an assortment of stolen belongings, souvenirs from his victims, no doubt. Their worst fears were confirmed, Pete was a serial killer, and their town was his hunting ground. Jane and John remained concealed in their hidden vantage point, watching as Pete emerged from the old cabin in the woods. Fueled by curiosity and a sense of dread, John decided to approach the cabin and investigate further. The dilapidated structure exuded an eerie aura, and the interior was dimly lit, adorned with unsettling animal trophies. As John cautiously made his way to the back of the cabin, he was met with a horrifying sight. A large container stood before him, filled with an array of macabre body parts. Before he could call out to Jane, 
a sudden impact from behind sent him reeling. Something hard struck the back of his head, causing him to collapse to the ground in a daze. Through the haze of pain, John managed to glimpse Jane standing over him, wielding a spade with a malevolent glint in her eyes. Shock and confusion overwhelmed him as he struggled to comprehend the terrifying reality before him. The person he had trusted with his life had turned into something he could not recognize, and the darkness that had consumed their town had now enveloped his own life. Jane. What? Why? John managed to gasp, his voice shaky and filled with hurt. Jane's face remained cold and detached, devoid of the warmth he had known. I never thought you'd uncover the truth, John, she said, a tone devoid of remorse. But now that you have, there's no turning back. John's mind raced, trying to make sense of the situation. He recalled the evidence they had uncovered, the dark secrets behind Pete and his caravan. It all fell into place, Jane's involvement, her previous marriages, and the sinister plot that had ensnared them all. You were in on it all along, working with Pete to lure men, marry them, and bring them to their doom, John whispered, the weight of the truth crashing down on him. Jane's lips curled into a chilling smile. Oh, John, you have no idea how easy it was to play the grieving widow each time, to collect their belongings and move on to the next victim. Fear and betrayal battled within John's heart as he struggled to comprehend the depths of Jane's depravity. He had thought their love was genuine, but it had all been a facade, a twisted act to mask the darkness that lurked within her soul. With a burst of strength, John lunged at Jane, attempting to overpower her. But she was quick and ruthless, striking him again with the spade. The pain was excruciating, but John's resolve only strengthened. He had to survive, he had to bring Jane to justice. In a desperate struggle, John managed to break free and stagger towards the edge of the woods, where he hoped to find help. Jane pursued him, her cold eyes burning with fury. Suddenly and without warning, John felt a forceful blow to his face, and from the shadows emerged Pete, appearing like a sinister spectre from the woods. Before John could fully comprehend the situation, he found himself being dragged deeper into the dense forest, his heart pounding in terror. As they ventured into a small clearing, Jane joined them, her eyes gleaming with malevolence. She skipped around with a twisted sense of glee, tauntingly asking Pete, Did I do good, daddy -o? To which Pete responded with a chilling nickname, You sure did, kitty cat. In the heart of the clearing, an ominous sight awaited John. There stood a fire crackling with malevolent energy, and next to it, a ghastly sight, a pre-made cross, waiting to be used for a horrific purpose. With malicious intent, Pete seized John and violently nailed him to the cross, a sinister smirk crossing his face. John's pleas for mercy fell on deaf ears as Pete callously continued, while Jane revealed in the horrifying spectacle, her laughter echoing through the forest. As the cross was rigged with ropes, Pete and Jane pulled it over the fire, and John's anguished cries reverberated through the woods. He writhed in pain as the flames licked at his flesh, consuming him in a living hell. In that moment of unspeakable horror, John felt utterly helpless, trapped in the clutches of his tormentors. Pete and Jane stood back, marveling at the success of their heinous plan, their hearts darkened by their malevolent deeds. With a twisted sense of satisfaction, they relished in their macabre achievement, savoring the agony they had inflicted upon John. With their monstrous act completed, Pete and Jane plotted their next wicked adventure, their souls consumed by darkness and their hearts devoid of compassion.